Yo, what is going on guys here? My name is Exposer Man, and today I got for you my top 10 tips to creating a great clan in Clash of Clans. What these 10 tips will do is they will make your clan a lot more active, more friendly, win a lot of clan wars, and you're just going to have a more enjoyable experience on Clash of Clans. So let's go ahead and get into tip number one. And tip number one is having a good a informative description and what that does is it allows you to be very transparent between a lot of people what I have what I'm talking about right here is this little side description right here it says Exposure Man's official clan to join all you need is a funny clip you're gonna want to make that very specific in your goals of the clan how much you wore everything of that nature thankfully Clash of Clans and Supercell have done an excellent job of in their recent updates of creating a more informative description of your war frequency, how much you wore, the location of your clan, uh, the members, the type, everything of that nature, the total points and the wars won, that, cre that alone creates a very good description in seeing what your clan mates will, the requirements they'll want to join this clan. That is very good. I do applaud Clash of Clans for doing that or Supercell. But what this allows us to do is it allows us to be very specific. So we're going to go ahead and search up some of the best clans. Uh, probably not the best clans. They're probably not going to be exactly great. We're going to look up in the global chat and show you some good clans. Maybe some ones that are not so good. And we're, gonna sh we're just going to view the clans. So here's what I'm talking about. So this is a relatively informative description right here. It says, must use both attacks and wars. So that's the, their wants. Um... You know, no rushed bases, a total of four or more, level six troops, what they want. So if you're a guy who maybe you want to say no rush town halls, you must have level five walls, you must be able to donate level four archers, put that in your description, what you want in your clan. This is for all your leaders out there. Me personally, my clan right here, I didn't really want much. I just wanted a clan where I could talk to a lot of my subscribers. And uh, it's right here. It's just my official clan. All you need to join is a funny clip, like a funny clip of you doing things. I don't want anything more, anything less. This isn't anything like that. But if you're a guy who maybe wants, who has level 5 archers and wants to get level 5 archers, then go ahead and put that in your description. Don't make any, don't make too many assumptions that you're going to get. Maybe don't say you must donate witches at all the time all the time if you don't have witches maybe you're a ton of level five don't say must donate max level troops if you can't fulfill the information that you set aside yourself don't do it so um, that's that's tip number one tip number two we're gonna have strict rules you're gonna want to be able to enforce those rules and have some strict rules so this goes along with our description right here our description of the clan we'll go ahead go pull that back up so maybe you have your rules are you must participate in war every time you use both your raids if someone doesn't use both their raids you should have a zero tolerance pol policy on that clan member and kick them out because in the long run when you're trying to win more wars maybe you won that war but that guy didn't participate go ahead kick him out now um, if they go ahead and cr this is gonna be another tip later on but if they go ahead and tell you ahead that they're not gonna be able to raid that one that's alright that's fine we'll go ahead and that's an exception we'll talk about that in a minute but if they just don't attack or maybe they say you say hey uh, dr have level six archers to donate and they're donating you like wall breakers or they're donating you, you barbarians they're not meeting the requirements be sure, be, be real strict. Be that kind of jerk and jerk leader. You don't have to be a jerk leader, but be that harsher leader that's willing to go ahead and kick people if they're not doing the right things. Maybe they have, you're saying no rush town halls. You know, if they have a rush town hall, go ahead and kick them out. So that's the tip number two. Tip number three, we're going to talk about enforcing those rules. Now those strict rules, you could have these real strict rules. They define guidelines, but if you're a guy who's kind of not really, uh, maybe you have a level 100 join the clan, and you're probably thinking, oh, this is so awesome. This guy is a level 100, and he joined our clan, and he's really cool. Or maybe I join your clan, and you're like, oh, Exposure Man is so cool, but I don't raid at all during your wars, or I don't do anything that's required in the description. 
go ahead and kick that guy and force those rules because if you don't it's going to come back and bite you in the butt you're going to have a very inactive clan maybe you're like you just need to talk during your clan and that guy doesn't talk it's just going to lead to a lot of mess so go ahead be that guy to enforce the rules that's probably one of my biggest tips right there is enforcing the rules you set down on your clan um, that's probably the best one there is so go ahead make sure you enforce the rules now i, I kind of like tapped on my desk to make sure you guys got the point along point number i think it's three or four point number four is in informative client clan or informative clan mail so what i'd recommend doing is probably about once a day just if you're a clan leader and you're trying to run a very successful clan have either you or your clan mates just send one mail a day don't spam it up with just kind of like the agenda of the day maybe you could be like yo what's up guys here just informing you of some things maybe we have a clan we're coming up in the next week or maybe we want to try to do a trophy push soon uh, or just things of an informative uh, decision so you know just things like that kind of a bulletin a daily bulletin of the clan that will keep you guys more active and keep a a more transparency between you and your clan makes they'll know exactly the objectives they're going to want to reach and things of that nature so don't just hit them on them one of the worst things i have ever seen is when a guy's like you know one second he's like we're not going to be a clan that wars a lot and then the next day they go ahead without telling anyone hey we're going to set a clan war going um that's really um, one of the things that makes me the work mad I like to have um, set dates, you know, like Monday, Wednesday, Monday, like something like Tuesdays and Thursdays we we war, something like that. I guess Tuesdays and Fridays we war, and they, and you know, you have a clan war, clan mail every day describing like, hey, it's coming up. This next clan war is coming up. It just keeps inf information flowing through the clan. So have a very informative clan clan mail. And try to keep that going. I'd say about one clan mail a day is very good. Two, you're kind of pushing it. Three, you're definitely pushing it. All right, so number five, I think. Yeah, it should be about number five. We're going to talk about a region-specific clan. Now, this is going to be a harder one for you guys because um, region-specific clans are ones that basically aren't international. If you're trying to be a really successful clan, maybe a war clan of some of that, this is more, more or less applies to war clans. Having a clan that has both overseas, um, a presence overseas, can be very inefficient. Now what I'm talking about is maybe, I'm talking about region, I'm talking about kind of like your continent almost, your time zone. I'd say a time zone within five hours should be, about four or five hours should be pretty solid. Um, I'm saying maybe you're a guy that lives in New York City. Um, America or you live in America I probably wouldn't associate with them Europeans I, I don't, I'm not I'm not trying to to, um, to degrade the Europeans at all but what I'm trying to say is if you're based in America you probably don't want to have clan members from Europe or from uh, the Middle East or something like that because of the time zone difference um, this is specifically for the time zone difference um, if you're planning a, 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 a war or something like that and you and your clan mate, you, you say we're going to war at 7 p.m. And uh, your clan mate is from, let's say, Ukraine. And he has like a, let's say, a 10-hour differential, and a t time zone differential. That could be bad because, you know, 7 for you might be 4 in the morning for him, depending on where he's from. So it, it allow, you, don't, you don't really get to talk to that guy as much. So try to keep it region specific. If you live in America, try to have American teammates. If you live in Europe, try to have your European clan mates. That's just the thing right there. That's the thing I'd recommend right there. Region specific or time zone specific. One, for transparency. Two, to allow you all basically to know a set time. Let's go on to number, I guess, number six. Number six, possibly? Possibly six or seven? I don't know. All right, we're going to talk about maxing out bases. No rush town halls if you really want a really successful war clan or just a successful clan in general have guys that are maxed out this is pretty much a maxed out base besides the mortar i know you guys would be like that's not maxed out at all it's not even close your traps aren't maxed out um that really doesn't matter i'm talking about basically your walls in general if you're a town hall level eight you should probably have level eight walls or level seven walls but if you see a guy he's a town hall level 10 he's trying to get in your clan and he has like level, let's say level six or five walls. 
I wouldn't accept him just for the fact that he's a rush town hall. When you go into those clan wars, they're basically set up to where you, your clans are going to battle based on the size and how many of each town hall are in that clan. So if you have like six town hall tens that are really should be probably a town hall level five but they're, or a town hall level seven, but they just kind of rush to get some cool stuff. Um, you're going to be faced up against a, another clan that has the same amount of Town Hall level 10s. And if they're maxed out, they're going to absolutely obliterate those bases. So try to have those really maxed out bases or close to maxed out. You know, I'm talking about maxed out. I'm not talking about like, you know, bases that are like j early early new Town Halls. I'm talking about ones that are right on the right progression. So if I'm, say I, I upgrade to Town Hall level 9... That's still pretty much, uh, it's not a rush town hall because I, I maxed out this town hall level 8 and then I'm going on to my next one. So just you guys are pretty much on a good progression. I'm not talking about maxed out because no one, not all your clan mates are going to be able to be maxed out. Um, they're going to be going through their clan or they're going to be going through their base and uh, it's all going to work out like that. So I definitely recommend just a guy who's progressing pretty well. So when I'm a Town Hall level 9, people should accept me because I had a t maxed out Town Hall level 8. I'm walking up pretty well. Alright, now number 7 I think. Should be number 7. I think we're on the right track now. Um, you should have a donations of at least 500. A preferable donations of at least 1,000 in the clan. Um, probably 500 is pretty good though. It's a pretty feasible thing to do. Um, what you're going to want to do basically is uh, just have a description of how much you want, do how many donations are required, and um, if they don't meet those donation requirements, take them. Try to be that specific. Having a more active clan will be a clan that donates more. A, a more donating clan means a more active clan and a more active teammate. So uh, try to get those donations up. I'd say about a thousand is very good. It makes your clan look really good for potential new clanmates too. If they see guys are donating a heck of a lot of troops. So uh, that's tip number seven. Tip number eight, we're going to talk about transparent clanmates. So basically you guys who communicate well with each other. Um, just be real transparent with your clanmates as a clan leader. Say, hey, these are the specific dates in which we are doing these specific things. And try to stress that a lot. Make sure they know exactly what your clan objectives are, your clan goals. Because one of the worst things that can happen is a guy or a leader who's like, Alright, war today. Alright, no, we're not going to war today. Okay, we're going to have a trophy push today. He just spurts things on the random. Unorganization is a very bad trait among leaders and you want to be a very organized leader and what that will allow you to do that will allow you, they'll keep your clanmates happy because they'll know exactly when they want to do things and they'll be able to be more prepared so you're most likely going to do that more successfully number nine have a bunch of friendlies in your clan because a friendlier clan means um a good clan uh, a clan that wants to win and stick together um, if you're going to have a bunch of guys who are just total jerks to each other, or you have a, a core group of, say, 15 guys who are really good, they meet all the requirements, they're talking a lot, they're donating, they're really nice to each other, but maybe you have that 16th member who's just kind of like there, holding everyone down, he's real mean, he's kind of just a guy who's going around being a real grumpy goose. What I recommend doing is kicking that guy. He might have all the requirements, he might donate a lot, he might you know be an excellent raider the problem is that he's not a good teammate in the uh, clash of clans is a clan is a team based thing and he's if he's ruining the clan causing people to get in fights uh that one guy um he's not worth it just go ahead and kick him try to keep a real friendly clan where everyone's just kind of happy with each other and not arguing a lot now if there's an argument once or twice yeah you let that happen don't kick anyone for arguing like for like little petty things but if they're arguing quite a bit and there's a specific source to it execute that source from your clan all right lucky number i guess not lucky number 10 because lucky number seven but this is the last one is have a good feeder um if you're getting to be a bigger clan or maybe you have like 10 members even if you have 10 members in your clan that are really good and uh guys who come in and try to join who don't have the specific requirements what you should do is you should make a second clan or a, a feeder clan and what that will do is it will basically farm those guys to come up to your clan so maybe you have a level requirement of level 70 on your clan and a guy tries to join and he's a level 65 
and uh, you're like, uh, should I keep them or should I bend the rules a little bit? Don't bend the rules. Send, make a feeder clan, send him to that, wait till he gets to level 70, and he'll come back. A feeder clan is great to keep people loyal to your clan or keep people who aren't as who don't have the requirements but definitely want to get there it's a farming system for your clan to get to the big leagues of the clans and it also keeps new prospects to be looking for for your new clan so that's basically it that's my 10 tips to creating a great clan in clash of clans i hope you guys enjoyed it i hope it was really effective and i hope you guys just and just put these out there um it should be really good that's basically it thanks for watching guys i'll see you next time and uh later